Hello and welcome to the Unscripted Podcast, episode 3. Today's podcast is all about film, our film top 10. We're also joined by a special guest, Josh. He has the honour of being our first guest ever on the podcast. That is an honour. Thanks for having me. No problem. It's our honour to have you on. <laughs> it's getting emotional already. <laughs> right. Okay, so let's get into this then. So, Who wants to go first? And you go away. Me? All right, and you okay. go. We'll, we'll read out all our top tens and then we'll get into them all. If you want to do it that way. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. N- number 10, The Thing, 1982 version. Number 9, Train Spotting. Number 8, Blade Runner. Number 7, Jaws. Number 6, Interstellar. Number 5, Saving Private Ryan. Number 4, Get Out. Number 2, Arrival. No, no, number three, Arrival, sorry. Number two, the Star Wars franchise. Number one, Dark Knight. <laughs> that, Star Wars count. counts as one. Yeah, it does. Star Wars counts. You know what's happened in about 20 films in the one? No, no. Star Wars counts. <laughs> the only good Star Wars <laughs> film is Attack of the Clones and no. maybe Phantom Menace. No, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping Star Wars as a franchise. You can come for me anyone. I don't care. Okay, right, go on, Keaton. Me, okay. Uh, number 10, War Dogs. Uh, number 9, Simple Men. Number 8, Caravaggio. Number 7, Marriage Story. Number 6, Mother. Number 5, Opening Night. Number 4, Parasite. Number 3, Seventh Seal. Number 2, Mirror. And number 1, Stalker. Parasite! Mm. Right. Yeah, Alright, George, on you go. Um, pressure. So what? <laughs> number 10, Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond. Number 9, American Psycho. 8, Holy Moly. 7, The World's End. Uh, number 6, Step Brothers. Uh, number 5, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Number 4, The Dark Knight. And 3, Tim Buttons, Alice in Wonderland. Number 2, Joker. And then number 1, Get Out. Yes, I like that. That was good. I've, I've made a tweak to mine. I put Parasite <laughs> number two as Star Wars is not a full one. <laughs> We're all about Parasite. Yeah. How could you Parasite. forget about that masterpiece? I know, I know, I forgot. It slipped my mind. Right. Uh, okay, so I guess... One of first yeah, well, let's start with our number ten. So War Dogs, it's a good Todd Phelps film. It's like a feel-good American war film, I guess. Not war in his traditional sense, it's like scamming the war system and making money off of it. It's quite good. That's pretty much it, Johnny. there's not much else to say. Go watch it. Nah. <laughs> Mind you, The Thing, John Carpenter's version, 1982. It's a horror movie, but it's not what you think it will be. It's set in the Antarctica, it's gross in places, but it's better than the remake, trust me. Go watch that as well. I like that one. Take a word for it. Right. Um, Go on, Josh. Mine's is Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond, which is a documentary about Jim Carrey, and it's got footage from his film uh, Man on the Moon, where he plays Andy Kaufman, like an old comedian. And it's based, so basically, they didn't want the footage to get out in case they, everybody sued him because he was uh, method acting. And they took it well too far, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a good watch. It was a very good watch, but uncomfortable. But thank you. Good. Right, number nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, mine's just train spot. <laughs> Obviously. Fair enough. I think, I, think everybody, I think everybody listening has either seen train spot or knows about train spot in mm. Scotland. So I don't feel really I need to talk about it that much. But how many have read the books? I've read I've read the book. I read the book before I read, watched the movie. How I'm does it compare? Uh, I think I think the book's better. Oh. I know, but, I know, it's bold and it's controversial but I think it's better. I, think I read the Hunger Games books before watching the films. That was... A mistake. Yeah. That long. 
the Hunger Games books are, are not that good, apparently. They're okay. They're okay. They're not they're, as they're, good as the films. Yeah. Okay, so my number nine is Simple Men by Hal Hartley. It's a very sort of blunt film. The dialogue's very sharp and almost unnaturalistic in a sense. But it's just like this sort of weird story of these like two brothers who are on the lookout for their terrorist father who has disappeared. <laughs> and there's also like a side plot of like love affairs and relationships. When was this made? <laughs> uh, like, 90s I'm pretty sure. It's on YouTube for free, oh. so simple men, go search it up and watch it. That's an interesting choice, quite left field. Mm. And a film that's not left field is my number nine. What's your last name? Buffer of a Nation. Psycho. <laughs> um, <laughs> Christian Bale plays an investment banker who, um, where he has a lot of lust for blood, basically. That's his sort of thing. And then it goes too far. Um, a lot of people would know it, but it's it's an amazing film, in my opinion. And the performances are very good. Why is it not higher up? Uh, <laughs> oh, well, because my next oh, film are just unbelievable. Right. Keep the best ones to last. Hmm. Right. Um, Mine's is my number eight is Blade Runner. The new one or no, the original? Original. Harrison what, Ford. What cut of Blade Runner? Because there's that many. Oh yeah, oh, the original, the original. Not with the voiceovers. The, what, voiceovers. the theatrical release. Yeah, the theatrical. See, see the voiceover cut. The the, the one they released after that ruined the film. <laughs> Having Harrison Ford speak over it, that ruined it. Do you not think? Have you seen that? No, I don't watch it. <laughs> oh no, right, yeah. I was, I was, I was wondering because you were talking about it like you did. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, but it was the way he spoke over it just completely ruined the film. It like ruined the tension, took away the kind of drama of the music. But yeah, the original the theatrical cut, that's the one I'm getting at. Yeah, that's a masterpiece. I. I did think about putting it higher, but the other ones have more sentimental and kind of significance to to myself. So what's your uh, number eight then, Josh? Um, mine's is Holy Moly, and it's a three minute film, so easy watch. Wow. And um, it's about a sisterhood of nuns who are actually assassins. Nice. And then it follows this one nun who finds out that the head of this uh, sister had actually killed her mother. Mm-hmm. And then phew, mayhem unravels, and it's amazing. I love it. In three minutes? But, yeah. <laughs> it's more like, it's kind of a music video, but mm-hmm. not at the same time. Cool. Yeah, if that makes any sense. That's an interesting choice. I like that. You're doing yeah. film when you're picking things like that. That's that sounds good. interesting. <laughs> I'm going to need to watch this now. I am. Put all our stuff in the bio at the end for people to look at. Mm-hmm. So uh, my number eight is Caravaggio by Derek Jarman. It's a sort of romantic biopic. It's very good. Um, yeah. It's kind of strange in places, but it's got an incredible cast. So it's worth watching. And Derek Jarman's just a good film director anyway. He did the best film that you will ever hear, which is Blue. It's on YouTube for free, and it's just a blue screen the entire time while the drama and commentates. Like, I have never heard of that film. No, no, no. Just picture a boy background and a person talking, and that's it. That's it? Mm-hmm. Oh. I should go watch that as well. <laughs> that sounds... Equally as interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess right. I'll, I'll go to my number seven, which is uh, Marriage Story, which mm-hmm. is a great film. It's a great, naturalistic, makes you not want to get married. I mean, the performances from Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson are fantastic. I think as well, it's just very well paced, the idea of 
at first you're with one character on one side and then you transition onto the other character's side as the film progresses as well. So it keeps you engaged. Yeah. Do you think Adam Driver should have won awards for that? Yes. Yes, oh. It's instead of uh, Joker. Mm. Mm. That, mm. Film. that can be up that can be up for later debate. That's pretty <laughs> that existed. <laughs> Oh. Alright, I'll move on to my number seven, which is Jaws, Steven Spielberg's classic, the first one, obviously. Um, many reasons for this, as I did it in film classes throughout school, and I have seen it countless times, but at the same time, it was revolutionary for its time, with the use of camera, the shark itself, <laughs> top quality shark that was. Um, yeah, Have you seen think, like yeah. the, the later versions? Isn't there like a third one or something? <laughs> it goes up like five. There's like five of them. Yeah. One of the later versions is like CGI shark is on like a 2D pointing. <laughs> and X. It's probably just like a clip of it on YouTube. I think it's better with the mod and the actual kind of though. Yeah. <laughs> it looks better. It's actually believable. Yeah, it's believable. It's more believable than the CGI. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, Josh, your number seven. Uh, my number seven is The World's End by Edgar Wright, um, featuring Simon Pegg, which he's just got, he's just in all the good comedy films and that, like, good-looking films as well, mm. so, um, and so basically it's about a group of friends who return to their hometown, who, I love, I love um, who, well, the, the hometown's been taken over by, by aliens. Um, but it's it's amazing. Um, they just met go on a pub crawl and end up saving humanity. So that says that says it all, really. Do, do you not want to think? Did you not want to put one of the dead there instead? Do you rate worlds? Um, it was between them two, but I've watched the worlds end more. So to me, it's cool. And it'd be cool um, to see uh, Edgar Wright's Ant Man. Mm. That'd have been an interesting film. Before they cast them out, got rid of them. Yeah. I should have put an MCU film down. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, I've got. Yeah, I don't have any. I don't have any either. Oh uh, well. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> the greatest film franchise ever. We we both have DC. Oh, yeah, I've, I've got a couple. Of that's that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Right, you need Christopher it? Nolan films. I know, it's all Christopher Nolan. He, mm. just, he still yeah, yeah. Uh, Who's next? Yeah, so uh, my number six yeah, is cool. Mother, Bon John Ho's film. It's not as traditional as these other films. It's a bit different. It's about a uh, mother and son, and the son seemingly kills somebody, and the mother has to try and prove that he's innocent. Because his son can't remember anything. And it's this mother is a psycho basically. He will not stop until she like proves that he is not guilty. Is this a recent release? No. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, I'm not questioning you. I'm not, I, I, I don't expect you to know that. I don't know I'm dates. Just... Nah, I don't know dates either, don't worry. It's fine. Yeah, it's on the uh... BFI player, I think. So, it's worth watching. Uh, is, it, is it me next or...? Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, it's me next, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Number six, Interstellar. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 well, you, you sit there and laugh. I, I don't think you should laugh. That's a good I film. It's a very good film. <laughs> it's a very good film. And it's a very good score. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Oh yeah, the score, is especially. Hans Zimmer. Yeah, that's, I think that's his best score. That he's done. Pack yeah, is better than Inception. I would agree. It's better. It's better than Inception. It's got more. But if it feels less rushed. And Paul's Lion King as well. He did. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, so uh, yeah, Lion King is also number one. <laughs> yeah, no, Lion King. Lion King is number one, obviously, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Interstellar next. Yeah, I, I, I feel like Interstellar is a, a different take on. It's not. 
you know, kind of classic kind of time traveling kind of movie. It's different and it's got more emotion to it. And I think the score definitely does carry its weight and helps it a lot. What did you think of the bookshelf scene? I thought it was a very good scene. I liked it a lot. Why? 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 why it makes no sense. Why are you asking? <laughs> well, it, it does. If you, oh, you, you need to look into it more. I don't want to spoil it for people. Obviously, if, you, if they're watching, they want to watch it. But like, I think, I think scenes like that make it different and unique from different time travel and classic movies from like I don't know, the eighties. Back and to the future. Yeah, back to the future. Yeah. Back to the Future was good for its time, but now you look at it. It's Avengers okay. Endgame. <laughs> no, that was rubbish. Yes, that wasn't very good. That was yeah, not even top 10 Yeah, so. Disappointing. Oh, oh, oh my god, I've, li I've legit forgot. What one was the bef before Endgame? It was. Uh, Infinity War. F Infinity War was good. That was good. That was better than, that was better than Endgame by a mile. <laughs> You can't stay up away. I mean, I agree. You really say that, so. I've, I've said it. Well, Scorsese well, wouldn't approve. I don't care what Scorsese's got to say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, who's number six now? Uh, um, me. My number six is Step Brothers. Yeah. Um, just a stupid film. But yeah. you can always watch to cheer you up. Um, uh, it's just a well, well filed classic. Like it's just, just his trademark film. Like, oh, uh, it's so funny, but so stupid. But that's what makes it so good. I love it. I've, I've seen that so many times. <laughs> I think I could quote it if I if I tried. <laughs> do, you think should, do, do you think they should make a second one or leave it? I, I don't know, because I don't want them to do a second one and ruin it. Because mm. yeah. it's like an iconic comedy film, so if they do a second one, it's just not as funny. Have you heard that they are talking about redoing Scarface? Yeah. Um, yeah. That could be interesting. Just, just, just some films like deserve to just be left alone. Yeah. And not remade. Like Scarface and Step Brothers is like on game level. Of I mean, I would say it's Step Brothers is above. Mm -hmm. Like it's mark on history of film. Mm. People will be looking back, but remember that the best film ever, Step Brothers. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, if we were doing purely comedy, I'd put that number one. Mm. I almost I put Dumb and Dumb. Oh um, yeah, Dumb and Dumb. But then they made made a second one, and it kind of. I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> Deserves to, deserves to be left alone, as yeah. we've both said. I don't watch comedy yeah. films, to be honest. I just watch dark and depressing films, <laughs> which I think paints a perfect picture of my own life. Are you alright, right, there, Kieran? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I didn't like the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> alright, so um, my number five okay. then. Opening night. Sean Cassavetti. Um it's very unique in that like the past the last forty minutes they basically become like a documentary. It's like a film about a theatre actor who's like struggling after one of our fans is killed while trying to meet her. And so she's like struggling to contemplate what she should be doing, how she should perform in this opening night. It's like the build up to that. But I mean, John Cassavetti's work is all great. Very interesting visual style. Sort of long lenses following people. And at times it almost feels like it's the end of a take where the camera's very jarring and it just cuts. So, you should watch It's another naturalistic one. It's quite long. Is he one of your, is he one of your biggest inspirations then? Yes, I like to think so. Interesting. Do you base all your stuff off of him that you do, and you know, or do you try and take things from his work and put your own spin on it? If you're asking if I copy his work, you're absolutely no, correct. You... It's oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I'm inspired by his work. 
you're, you're copying it, but you're putting your own spin on. I haven't made any films good enough to even be called a copy. <laughs> no, not yet, but this time. Perhaps one day. Okay. Is it? Oh, it's my number five, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, mine's just Saving Private Ryan. One of the best war films out there. Uh, Spielberg, again. Uh, yep. About, it's about a rescue mission, obviously. I think the, the scene that has most significance is when they're stuck on the beach and they're being fired at. It's not it's not a spoiler, but it just, I think it kind of, it was like the first war film that kind of painted the kind of horrific kind of nature of the war and kind of that kind of scenario of being stuck at the beach and being, not being able to move with gunfire and kind of missiles flying at you. I felt I that was a very important piece in cinematography in the last decade. Any decade? <laughs> yeah, decade was ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. Last decade. decade. The last decade. <laughs> yeah, twenty tens upwards. That's decade. Uh huh. Yeah, last decade. The film didn't come out the last, last decade. decade. Yeah, it did. Did it? Oh no, it didn't. Oh no, it didn't. No, 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 no. I've been oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh no no you, no you uh, you you're right you're completely correct I thought it was sooner than that nah never mind Shock. yeah sorry yes, me thinking you, as, you as you said as you said as you, nah as you said earlier as you said earlier I'm not very we're not very good with dates <laughs> I forgot about that yeah anyway m- move on to someone else not the fight <laughs> dates are ruined I'll, I'll, I'll take over uh, show them how it's done no I don't I can't believe it I'm number five. It's the Grand Budapest Hotel, um, directed by Wes Anderson, who I think is one of the best directors, to be honest, in my opinion. I don't want to be uh, thrown out there. Um, Because visually, all all of his films are just stunning Mm -hmm. um, and pleasing and easy to watch as well. Um, And especially in this scene, there's one where the main character on it, Gustav, um, gets accused of a murder in his own hotel and he's, so the camera never moves for about five minutes, doesn't move for like five minutes um, and it's just perfectly symmetrical and you're like that, it's just beautiful and the, I mean he doesn't use depth of field so he doesn't really care about it, making things shallow or deep or whatever, he's just like this is how it is um, but yeah, the story is that this uh, man Gustav runs a hotel and gets accused of murder um, and then this whole film is him trying to prove his innocence and it's colourful very like always Anderson films yeah I feel like you're going to have to shift to your right now so you're bang on centre with your webcam symmetrical Mm -hmm. perfect (laughs) <laughs> but I'm Wes Anderson would be proud. I'm defying it. <laughs> yeah, no, but you're, you're being symbolic. That's uh, in very interesting. <laughs> you being in the corner of the screen is representative of how you feel in society. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Suppressed. That's that's Suppressed, that? oppressed, everything. Uh, Kieran, go on. Give us your... Number, is it number four? Number. Yeah. Yeah, number four. This is when we start to get... Juicy. <laughs> Parasite. It's might go flying. Right, can, yeah. I, can I say something? I changed to Parasite number four. I switched it in. <laughs> um, so if you want, I'll jump in. You know. okay, yeah, Parasite's on. number four. It's absolutely fantastic film. Sort of commentary on social class and divide. Not just in, like, the career, but also in the world. It's, yeah. Uh, Hesitate yeah, to use the word masterpiece, but it's a masterpiece. I'd, 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 I'd like to say it's a masterpiece as well. Oh, I can't believe it. Isn't it the first Korean film to win? Was it, was it best film? Or, yeah, it was the first Korean film best to win picture, it, yeah, yeah. And he was the, be- the first Korean director to win it as well. Mm-hmm. That's, that's insane. That's he's, insane. He's, I mean... 
he's got to be one of the best directors in this century and the last century. Big show. Yeah. That's... I think so. Yeah. I don't really know anyone else more recently who's <laughs> done better. You <laughs> can't really say Christopher Nolan, no. <laughs> you can't really say Christopher Nolan. I'm fed up with he's... his love affair of time. <laughs> So yeah, well, you know. Would would you say that's his be- last best film, Interstellar? Uh, do you know? I think no one just wants to direct a Bond film. Yeah, I'm well, just going, and then he'll stop. Yeah, and then he'll stop. I mean, Tenant is probably the closest he's going to get to a Bond film at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Who is? Yeah. Do you know who is directing a new Bond film, or who's already done it? Uh, he's. Name escapes me. Was it not meant to be Danny Boyle? Possibly. Possibly. I think it was meant to be then. I don't know mm. if he got, got the Didn't top. he pull out? Yeah. I think he pulled. Yeah. That would have been really that. interesting though if it was Danny Boyle. Yeah. I don't think he was to be that. We should really know the Bond director to be fair, but. No, but I mean, the it's tired old franchise. Yeah, like Star Wars. <laughs> yep. Don't go for Star Wars like that. <laughs> that, holds, that holds value in my childhood. We just ignore all of the sequels. Mm. Yeah, ignore the new ones, they're rubbish. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the old ones. They're, they're the best ones. The classics. The classics are the best. Uh, do you want to go, Josh, on your number four? Because me and Kieran have the same number four. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, my number four is uh, The Dark Knight by Christopher Nolan. What a director. Yes, that's um, the best film. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Oh, that is the best film. Batman is like my favourite uh, superhero. Um, and Heath Ledger's performance as Joker was outstanding. Um, so I'm, I think he sort of made it what it is, to be honest. Like the end yeah. film, yeah, Jack Nicholson was good, but it wasn't like, oh, who's going to follow that up? But then, I mean, don't need to talk about the Joker in between Heath Ledger and Joaquin, but, um, but also... It has. Um, and you go. Hmm? Thank you. No, it has okay. such a clear style as well. It's very, very high contrast. And that's something yeah. that's consistent throughout I feel like as well looking at your background you just have like a poster of Gotham on your wall <laughs> it would fit in perfectly <laughs> you just got like city oh. landscapes <laughs> in the background I've got a fan poster right there so oh. I'm a, I could say I'm a fan um, but also the story of him and this film especially he comes across like this he doesn't know what the line is between being a hero and sort of doing right and wrong, which I really like in this film. But Heath Ledger sort of stole the show, didn't he? So, would, would, you, would you class? Or go on, Kian. What's that uh, quote from like Batman Begins oh. that Rachel tells him? Oh, no. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like. Oh, I know that. And then he like repeats it. <laughs> he repeats it on the ledge, on the roof, and then he just jumps off. Oh, that's annoying. Um, is it? Is it the scene where the rock? Oh no, it wouldn't be the scene where the joke. Not, the not coming to me. Nah, it's not coming to me. Uh, I've, I've got a few. What were you gonna say? Why? I've got a few questions for Josh about the Dark Knight. That's oh, alright. Don't, don't do that. No, no, it's simple. It's simple. Right. Would would you class Batman as an as a legit superhero or just a rich man with a shit ton of money? <laughs> um, I would say he's a superhero. No. What do you think I defines? What do you think defines a superhero? What defines a superhero? It's interesting because he's like on the cusp. Yeah, that that's the thing. He is like fifty fifty. He is just extremely wealthy and can fight. But I, su- I, I suppose his backstory is helps. Yeah, yeah, that's what superheroes need a backstory, don't they? 
Like, that's just a thing. Like, everyone's got a traumatic past. And that makes them a yeah. superhero. Mm-hmm. So. With great power comes Keep great responsibility. Hashtag right, Uncle Ben. Uncle. <laughs> Uncle Ben? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, his, is that his rice thing? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no 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 no! Oh no no no! <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've just realised what you said. Spider-Man, yes. Oh, oh no. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> That's shocking. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all the listeners. I'm not at it today. I'll try my best. <laughs> New Uncle Ben's phone. You were talking about Batman and I was like, why are you gonna jump to Spider Man? Don't do that to me. Don't scale me. I was gonna, I was gonna say something about um, Keith Ledger's performance in comparison to most recent Jokers. Yeah. Do you think it's still the best, or? Um, it's tough to judge, in my opinion, because obviously Hawking Phoenix got his own film, and he was like, yeah. it was the origin story into how he became Joker. But with Keith Ledger, he was just like, and um, he was just, like Joker from the beginning, and he was like. Um, like, uh, what's it? <laughs> what's the one? Side character, but also main villain, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, antagonist? But, yeah, that. Yeah, antagonist, yeah. Um, hey. But I think Keith played Joker better than Joaquin Phoenix in my opinion. Like, the actual. Uh, yeah. I agree. Joker. Yeah. But I, I, do agree. I do agree. I do agree. I also think he was just in a better Joker film. Yeah, well, well, you know, we don't need to get into that at the moment. Let's get into that when I was your number three. Okay, so number three, is it? Yeah. Uh, okay, so for me, it's uh, Seven Steel. It's an absolutely fantastic film. It's sort of social commentary on religion, life and death. It's very, very good. Sort of metaphorical. Um, spiritual, very symbolic. Which, yes, basically, this knight plays a chess game with uh, death itself. And so, yeah. I, I mean, it's on YouTube as well for free, so it's worth watching. A lot of your films are on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Just where all good films are, apparently. Oh, fair enough. Cool. Yeah, cool, yeah. Uh, <laughs> does that have any significance in. Your films or anything like that? I am oh, nowhere so near Bergman's level. No, but I mean... Do you One aspires to... Be... Yeah, do you aspire I mean, to be like him? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the symbolic point of view, absolutely. Metaphorical point of view. That's something that I've taken to my own films. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, do you want me to go next? Sure. Um, yeah. Mine's will be quick, because I bet you two don't have this. Um, Arrival, sci-fi film, 2016. Amy uh, Adams. Chosen. Yeah, Amy Adams, the whole thing about the aliens communicating through language. I like it in particular because of the music by uh, my favourite soundtrack movie composer, whatever you want to call it, Johan Johansson. He recently, well, he didn't recently, but he passed away like a year ago, two years ago. And that's, I think, the score there particularly holds significance in the way it kind of moves the story, builds up the aliens, because the aliens aren't your typical kind of alien versus predator. It's more kind of mysterious and unknown, and you don't know what they'll do next. And I think the music adds to that very well. Yeah. Go, go watch film. it. That's what yeah. I think it's very good. It's one of the best sci-fi. Sci fi films in recent times. Amy Adams' performance as well is brilliant in it. Yeah, she is very good in it, actually. It's one of her better things, isn't it? I All think. Right. Josh, on you go then. Um, my number three is Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. 
Yes. Not the biggest film. It's not been. It's not going to go down history, but that was a film that got me into uh, directing, and I, I from that I really fell in love with film. Um, and Tim Burton's like my favourite director. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like a popular person film, but so what? Um, but yeah, when I saw that, I was like, wait, you can do this. You you can make stuff like this in film. Since when? What? Mm. And then it, I just, it, was, it was just unbelievable when I was young. And then they made a second one yet again, and it's just sometimes just, people need to stop making second ones, is my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only good sequel I'd say is Godfather, part two. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that is that uh, Alice in Wonderland the one with Johnny Depp? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Saw so yeah. so that in the cinema car. actually. Mm. I mean, you could go to Tim Burton's like back catalog and go with Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> so, apart from, like, I feel, there's, I feel like three films he's not in. Johnny Depp is Batman. Um, Make it happen. No, let's not. <laughs> yeah, let's leave let's that. Not do that. Yeah, we've already got Twilight doing Batman. I can't believe that. No, 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 hold on. Hold on. <laughs> no. You, you no, think he'll we'll get, we'll get? Do you think he'll be good? He's gonna. He's. The thing is, right, people only know him from Twilight, but he's done some amazing films. The White House, been one of them. Good time. Yeah. An amazing actor. I could have put that down. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm um, joking. I think, he'll, I think he'll be good. I think he'll be better yeah. than, um... Mm-hmm. Oh, who was the previous? Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck, ben Affleck yeah. What I, did, I did not enjoy Ben Affleck at no, all. I thought it was dead off. I mean, so it was bad. terrible writing as well, to be fair. Mm. Yeah, that Batman vs Superman film is <sighs> truly dreadful. That is so bad. Oh, my oh, yeah. That was bad. That was very bad. Yeah. But also, Matt, uh, who's directing a new Batman, who directed Planet of the Apes, so he's in mm. good hands. I'm mm. confident. Confident. Right, I like Planet of the Apes. Number two. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Huh? <laughs> you know. The number two. Go on, Q. Uh, Go on. Well, last two are by the same man, actually. But uh, number two is Mirror by none other than Tarkovsky. <laughs> Such a beautiful film. That's, I mean, there's not Go much on. more to say about it. It's very long. Oh. It's one of those ones you got to sit down and just immerse yourself in to do that with a lot of Tarkovsky's work. It's really symbolic and metaphorical and poetic. Um, and Miller is just another one of them. It's really, really good. Is that it? Is that is that's, that all you got to say? That's <laughs> it. Watch it. In it. Watch it, just go watch it, and that's it. Just go watch all of these films. Yeah, we'll put them in the description and stuff like that. <laughs> um, you know, I'll it's, we'll put it there. You know. It's not that easy to watch all these films. You'd either buy the no, I know, but, you know, or uh, you use just... Criterion Channel, which is only available in America. <laughs> Unless you have a, um, what's that called? VPN. 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 Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored, hashtag not affiliated with it. Alright, <laughs> uh, okay. My number two is Get Out. Mm. Obviously. Yeah, it's a horror Peele. movie on the surface. Yeah, Jordan Peele. Up and coming. One of, I think one of the best at the moment. Is he, he, he's a class he's, up and coming. He's established at this point. I don't know. He's... Yeah, he's established then. Alright, okay. He, he was up and coming. When this movie, that <laughs> you got, you got to admit, no one re- like you, people within the film knew of him, but he wasn't like what he is now. Mainstream. Well, he's a comedian. He as yeah, well. he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was um, announced that he was going to do a film like that. People were kind of like, "What? What do you mean?" So. Uh, 
I think Get Out's very good because of the way it kind of puts a... It kind of explores... I don't want to say it without sounding... It explores racism in a very different way and it kind of puts a black man in a white man's world and kind of traps him there and kind of explores different themes that people of colour experience these days and I feel like different kind of like uses of imagery to things like you know the scene where all the black cars come in the driveway mm -hmm. you know how each black car symbolises the person they killed each of the couple things like that I think things like that in the film are very clever in the way they kind of explore racism especially is why they won loads of awards and got recognition also, Daniel Kaluuya is a great actor. He's a funny guy. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect a South East Londoner to have that good of an American accent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh, your number two. Well, I'm thinking I might put get out of my number two now, Ooh. just just so we can get into the get into yeah. the day later on. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's coming. Yeah. yeah so go on, Josh. I'm, go on. I'm biting my tongue. So, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll get out. It's my number two. And then, then when my hand will be awesome, now my number one. So you can get into it. Yeah. Right, why, why is get out your number two? Um. Well, I only got to see it when it got added to Netflix. So I was kind of late to the party, but I watched it about ten times. And like you pick up on the symbolism in that film is unbelievable. Like even the, the dialogue, like if you listen carefully, kind of gives away what's going on straight away. From even mm -hmm. when he first meets her parents and they give him a tour of the house, mm -hmm. there's hints to like slavery and all that, and you just but like the twists. Like there's a certain point where I um, don't want to give it away, but he's looking yeah. through pictures and you're like, oh, oh, this is what's happening now. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a, obviously, a other, there's a many points where it like keeps turning and it keeps getting worse for the guy. So, so I, 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 think the scene, I think the scene where he's going around the party taking photos is quite significant and he takes four yeah. um, you know you, that scene yeah I think that's mm -hmm. that's a very important scene as well and kind of reveals mm. what's going on yeah and um, the bingo if you will that, that's yeah. what they were calling it anyway that scene was unbelievable yeah uh, I, I would recommend people to watch that because it's mm, easy to definitely. watch it's Netflix so yeah Kieran have you seen it? I have have you opinions? It's a good film. <laughs> I think it's probably Jordan Peele's one of his best films. Because he did yeah. Us, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was right, Us. Mm. I thought it was different. See, I'm not a fan of the horror genre, so... Yeah. Get out, I mean, like a nice, out. happy in between. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it happy, but, you know... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's an in-between. <laughs> Psychological kind well, of... Yeah. 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 I thought us was good. What's your number two? Why? Oh. And number one number is two. it now? It's number, number one. one. It's number, number one. one. Wow. We've already spoken about it, so we'll move on quickly. Uh, Dark Knight, purely for Heath Ledger's performance and kind of how many times I have watched that movie. A lot. Like. It's the movie I've watched most, just because of the whole kind of thing about Batman versus Joker and that kind of rivalry between them both. Which the is the whole kind of thing about rich, rich versus poor as well. Uh, and then the whole Batman versus Joker thing is completely destroyed in the most recent Joker <laughs> film. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, let's uh, before we get to the big one. Yeah. Um, so mine is. Tarkovsky's Stalker. 
absolutely fantastic and film. It, again, and long, but very, very good. It's, I mean, the basic premise is this thing called the zone, and these people yeah. go to the zone to try and get a sort of awakening, I suppose, to seek mm -hmm. happiness. And it's very sort yeah. of poetic, and it's really sort of long, dramatic tracking shots. Uh, filming Stalker, I think it was filmed like three times basically, three separate times, and it's a complete mess. And because they were filming yeah. like chemical environments and abandoned plants, um, a lot of the crew involved ended up getting like cancer. So Tarkovsky virtually died from making Stalker, which is like a whole new meaning to like dying for your work. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, you know, it's a bit extreme. It's, it's film <laughs> after all. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, yeah. I'm glad that he finally managed to make it. But obviously it's a bit tragic, the, <laughs> yeah. the aftermath down the line. <laughs> In hindsight, mm. was it worth it? Right, let's get into the <coughs> number one of my guest. Josh, go on. Well, I think we know what's coming now. My number one is Joker by Todd Phillips. <laughs> go on. Um, why is it your number one? Yeah, we'll please you please do out. justify. Well, one. <laughs> it's an iconic character. And has just the best icon. It's just the most iconic character. In any franchise, you don't. I'm, I'm, stay, I'm, I'm put that down. Um, number two, it's a real life situation, so it relates more to them like falling into a chemical uh, mm -hmm. waste type thing. You know what I mean? It's more believable. You feel, and something else, you feel bad for the guy, but he's killing people. You shouldn't feel bad for him, but you want him to do well. And, and there's just so many layers to the character in the film and it's shot beautifully. I don't care what you say, Kitten. <laughs> I, I would like to pretend that it is shot very very well. I think Kieran's point about that is wrong. Um, I mean okay, so yeah, go it on, is Kieran. shot beautifully. <laughs> yeah, sure. However it does look like somebody's peed in digital negative yeah the colour's just strange. I get what they're going for. The colour strange. Yeah, the, yeah, the colour is off, but that's the kind of whole thing. It's, as you said, they're going for. It's a very pretentious film. I think they think it's way more important than it actually is. That's Although, that's it completely that's destroys the whole concept of Batman versus Joker. Like Bruce Wayne, is what is like a wee kid. At the timeline yeah, makes it's, no it's sense. An it's an origin story. It's before. Mm -hmm. Joker's older than Batman. Joker's older than Batman. Joker's yeah, in but, the but 60s it, when he. That just doesn't make any sense. It's always been like that, though. Joker's been this kind of older, kind of clown mm -hmm. figure who haunts Batman. The Dark Knight? Yeah, he's quite older than that, apparently. Yeah, that's all done. Hmm. He's older than that. Um, also, Josh. conspiracy theory. What if Walking oh. Phoenix isn't the Joker, but the inspiration for the Joker? Oh, I'm pretty, oh. Mm, pretty oh. sure he's supposed to be the Joker. Mm. Mm. Oh, we want to get into all this? Because. <laughs> go on, go on, Josh. Back that well, conspiracy I just... I mean, there's a lot of theories about the film because it's so good. That's why it's my number one. Um, <laughs> that's the key in Because, <laughs> I mean, uh, they did show up, to be fair, they did show. Bruce Wayne's parents die, which is a bit of a cliche for DC films now. But they've done it in a different way where it's obviously the night that, you know, Joker's like becoming this big thing and everyone's wearing a clown mask and stuff. So it's like, mate, and no one, he doesn't seem like a leader of anybody, if you know what I mean. It's like he started this movement, but it's not like he's survived and he's not pushing for it. So. I think there is a possibility that he's just the person who inspires the Joker to do what he does. 
I think I think the scene at the end when he's in the mental asylum and it kind of hints that maybe it didn't actually all happen and it was all in his head. Yeah. That could be that could add to your conspiracy. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It hasn't ruined Batman v Joker. Nah, I think it's I think it's re re like that file. <laughs> it makes no sense. If they make a follow up film, it's gonna make no sense. Because Batman's gonna be like they, thirty, they and Joker's gonna be like in his seventies. But not confirmed. I'm making a second one yet, have they? No, but the world like, and... jo Joker's. Even if they make a second Joker movie, they won't include Batman in it because they don't need to. Um. And just, they, can, like, they can they can like continue it from what it's left off as. I mean, they completely don't take away the mystery of Joker. Like his character works better when you don't know his backstory. Yeah, but that was the whole point in it to kind of strip him back to this kind of broken figure who's got a lot of issues and kind of how he becomes it, that kind of mysterious figure. I think that's well, with all the Jokers, they've sort of hinted at the the backstory, but this is just diving into it. Mm -hmm. like, what was buttons they show him falling into the whole like the toxic waste and the shambles of how does that happen? What's uh, you... what a comic book film? Hmm? I mean that's his comic book origins. I get that Joker yeah. isn't yeah. a comic book film. At least it's not trying to be. Um and then obviously Keith Ledger you've got like oh dad's took Knife to the mouth and all that, so it's like mm -hmm. delve into that relationship. I mean, Jet Little shouldn't ever be mentioned as a Joker, and that <laughs> we can just get past that. Wasn't he? Wasn't he promised the second movie? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he said, he said DC and went, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go make a Marvel film, and it looks like it's gonna be the worst Marvel film they've made in like not eight years. So, yeah. What did you make of the dancing Here down the stairs scene? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's an iconic scene. Dodgy song. Cause yeah, but that... <laughs> it make the, what, the song uh... makes no sense. I think... No, it, it does. That's, that's what it's yeah. like. That's, but there's that whole scene it's... that takes you out of the film. It feels well, it it's, like, it's, it's, it's the becoming of what he's oh. eventually meant to become. Mm -hmm. It's kind of he's really he's free. He's like, like free mentally. Like it feels like they're trying to yeah. do a sort of Tarantino needle drop, but they've just not achieved it whatsoever. Mm. That's, that's that's harsh. That's, that's harsh. harsh. That is very harsh. I can't believe you said that. I think the music's very fitting for that bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, I mean, the I overall think... score is very good. Yeah. It's well composed. Yeah, she is very good. But then why didn't they just use a composed score for that? I think it because would have it's fit important better. That, it's because it's important that it came from who it came from. <laughs> Gary Glow. It's like, and then in relation to the Joker and kind of him as a villain, I think that's important. It fits mm -hmm. it. That's why. That's why they did it. That's why they did it. Mm -hmm. So basically, the Joker's the best film ever. So that's what me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. 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 That's my Keenan's final thoughts. Denial. No. No. <laughs> Your final thoughts, Keenan? No. I am done. <laughs> right. I, f I think. Are we all done? Thoughts finished, so, yeah. everything. All right. uh, it's been a pleasure, Josh. We've loved having you on. I've loved being here. We'll be back next week with another episode of Unscripted. <laughs>